Hi everyone, today we're going to be making three different kinds of 1950s hors d'oeuvres with a few different variations. So for our first hors d'oeuvres, we are going to be making dried beef rolls. For this, you only need a couple ingredients, some cream cheese, dried beef, toothpicks, and some horseradish. We are going to season the cream cheese to taste with the horseradish. So I'm not sure how spicy this horseradish is, so I'm just going to start with a little bit. Whew, it smells pretty hot. So maybe three-fourths of a teaspoon. And this is half of a block of cream cheese. Well, let's mix that up and then we'll taste it. So I ended up adding about a tablespoon of horseradish. It took a bit more than I was expecting. Um, but I didn't want to make it too strong, so I thought I'd leave it there. I'm trying to figure out how to open this. All right, so now we're going to take out a slice of the dried beef. Um, I'm not sure exactly how they made the rolls. I don't know if you're supposed to overlap several pieces like this to make a long roll. But I'm going to try both ways because I don't know. Um, and these are pretty thin slices. But anyways, I have a butter knife. And I'm going to spread these with cream cheese. So I spread the first one and now I'm going to do this one. I think I'm just going to use the cream cheese layer on the first one to kind of layer them and stick it together. I think that should work. And I think I will have to use several layers of the dried beef or several pieces to make it, uh, several pieces around to make the roll thick enough. I think I'll just start rolling now. Fold it over. Good, it stays in place pretty well. This is both easier and harder than I expected to roll these. Alright, and then I'm going to add two more pieces of dried beef because these are definitely not thick enough. This is what it looks like so far, and I'm just going to continue oops, rolling this up. Once you get the roll started, it's not too difficult. All right, I think I'm gonna leave that right there because I think that's the perfect um, thickness. And now I'm gonna use toothpicks to help hold this together. And then I think I will make one more roll just to make sure I have enough. This is kind of fun though. On either end, it kind of opens up the 
pretty loosely. And that's what it looks like. I got some cream cheese on the outside, but not too bad, I don't think, for the first try. All right, now I'm just going to repeat the same process, and then I'll show you the second roll when it's done. All right, so I ended up just deciding to do it until I ran out of cream cheese. But I actually ran out of um, dried beef first. So one jar of dried beef, half a package of cream cheese is about what you need. I have probably about a tablespoon, no, about two teaspoons left of the cream cheese mixture that I scraped out the bowl. Um, and I have all of these rolls. I ended up changing it a little bit. I started just doing one roll wide because it's a lot easier. And these three are two layers of dried beef around. And these two are three layers. So these ones are a little bit thicker and it was a little bit hard to figure out how to space out the toothpicks. I'm um, trying to make them all the same size, but I think it should work. And yeah, I'm gonna put these in the fridge to firm up before cutting them into slices. The next order we're going to be making is called burning bush and for this one you need seasoned cream cheese so to season it however you like i used celery salt and black pepper then you need minced chives minced dried beef or grated carrots i'm going to be using a little bit of each today i only have a little bit of chives but i still wanted to try it so it says to roll balls of seasoned cream cheese and then roll them in one of the mixtures, which one you try to choose to do. And this is softened cream cheese, so I was hoping that they would roll pretty well. And actually, at least so far, it's not too much harder. Um, I expect it to be a bit harder than it is. And then I'll set it on a tray. These are really cute, though. So you could also use minced parsley, but I didn't have any of that. Um, otherwise, I would have tried that one too. But I tried as many as I had ingredients for. I'm excited to see what the carrot one looks like. I think that'll look really cool. So this made exactly a dozen burning bushes, and this was about half of a package of cream cheese. last order all we need is toothpicks bacon and there's a few different options for the filling i chose green olives and then sausage so we'll see how those taste um i forgot that i needed bacon for this one so i only had one piece of bacon so instead of using halves today like the recipe calls for i'm going to be using fourths um just so i can still make this and make more than one kind so I'm going to start with the Vienna sausage. So we're going to take one of these and get them out. <laughs> it's like even more gross than I remembered, but take one of these and we're going to wrap it with bacon. And then hold it with a toothpick. It only just barely wraps around. So that'll have to do. So wrap that. And then I'm gonna do one more sausage. The other option, well, they had about six or seven options, but one of the other options was stuffed green olives. And I've just got regular that I'm going to use. I think with these ones, um, with the olives, you'd want a smaller piece of bacon anyway. Ooh, 
That's why they said halves, because it doesn't go all the way around. Oh well, it'll be fine. These have pits in them. I did not know that. Oh well, we'll make it work. And now we're going to saute these in a pan until it's hot and the bacon is cooked. We are almost done with all the hors d'oeuvres. These ones are ready. The bacon wrap rounds are ready. The last thing to do is to cut up the dried beef roll-ups. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Cut one so you can see the point from the middle. These are so cute. Look at that. Such tiny, cute layers. I love these so much. I want to make a lot now. They're like little candies. They're so cute. And these ones, I decided to leave a little bit longer from the end so they can look like little roses. At least I hoped they would look that way. They really cut pretty easily now that they are um, cold. Some of these aren't quite perfect rolls, but I think it kind of adds to the look. It's really neat. All right, well, I'm just gonna finish cutting these and then we'll, I will be back for a taste testing. Alright, these are so pretty. I made exactly enough to fill my platter, which I was very happy about. And now we're gonna try all of them. So I think first I'm going to try one of the beef roll-ups. These ones made really dainty little rolls that I love. Um, I made some with thicker cream cheese and some with thinner, and I prefer the look of the thinner ones. They held their shape better, and these ones just just carrot on the end of that, but they just don't look as nice to me. Um, I like the more dainty swirls. So next time I would definitely do the ones with less cream cheese, which were the ones I made second. I would also do the three layers of um, dried beef. <laughs> I cannot remember what they're called um, because I just liked the thicker rolls. And then I really liked these end pieces. They look kind of like little roses. Um, and I think those are really cute, but those also looked better when there was more layers of, um, the dried beef. So, cause they're, these ones are still cute, but I like the look of the other ones better. I think I, next time I'd be a little bit more intentional of, with, uh, not getting on the edges, the very edges of it, because of the beef when I was rolling it up. Because then it makes the roses look nicer, and it would be easier to roll. But I'm gonna try one of these now. So that's good, but they are very salty. Um, so yeah, you would definitely want to have want to have those alone. At least not very many of them. Dried beef is really salty, but that's just a little bit much. Um, so I wonder if maybe let's try one with more cream cheese because I think those ones will not be as salty. And the ones that I chose, um, the one I chose before, was pretty tightly rolled and it was more dried beef. So presentation wise, I do like the less cream cheese. It's just really cute, really dainty, but for taste, the ones with more cream cheese is better. Um, 
and it did, earlier the horseradish didn't taste as strong but I think letting it sit in the fridge made the horseradish flavor stronger it's not too much but it's still pretty strong all right now I'm going to try one of the bacon wrapper ones because these were supposed to be served hot but I got a little bit distracted so they're lukewarm I don't want to heat them up though those are pretty good it just kind of tastes like a bacon wrapped sausage um it definitely makes Vienna sausages taste much better um but I think next time I do a little smokies or something like that um just because I like this better than Vienna sausages but it's still pretty good all right now for the green olive bacon wrapped around wrap around my olives do have pits because that we yeah, actually got ones with pits um but I'll just eat around that I wasn't sure how much I would like the green olive with the bacon but that is really really good I like that it kind of balances it the flavors just kind of balance each other out and it's really yummy I really like that one I like that one better than the Vienna sausages um the Vienna sausage sausages are pretty good but that one's really good and it's pretty different from the normal ones I think that you see all right now there are three more kinds left to try I'm going to try the chives one um hives flaming bush i'm just gonna try half of this one because i don't want to be eating a lot of these some of them are pretty salty these ones shouldn't be salty though mm. it tastes like eating dip out a chip or a cracker and thing and it's really good and now we'll try a carrot one because i think it'll have a similar flavor and then we'll try a beef It's crazy how by just changing what you roll them in, how much that changes the flavor. Because the chives one tastes just like a herb cream cheese. And the carrot one is very sweet and it's really good. It's a kind of a carrot sweetness, so it doesn't taste too it doesn't taste too sweet, but it's a really nice sweetness and it's pretty sweet, more than I would have expected. Alright, now for the one of minced beef. Also very salty. But very tasty. I think all of these would be really good, but I didn't realize how salty some of these would be. Um, I guess it's not all of them. It's just all of them with the dried beef is pretty salty. So you definitely want to serve those with some other hors d'oeuvres so they would not taste quite so salty. But I want to make these a lot now because they're just so much fun to make and they're really tasty and these are perfect for a tea time or a baby shower, bridal shower, something like that. Um, and they didn't take too long to make. Um, I think it took about maybe 10 minutes to do all the beef wrap around, beef, dried beef, dried beef roll ups. <laughs> I was going to say wrap around and I was like, that's not right. Um, I think it took just under 10 minutes to do the beef roll ups, including time to cut them. Um, the cream cheese ones probably took about 10 minutes as well to make all the flavors and the Bacon wraparounds only took maybe three or four minutes, um, probably five, including cooking time. So they're all pretty quick, and I counted, and this made 45 from about 30 minutes-ish of prep time. And then you have a really nice, pretty uh, appetizer, or whatever I was going to say, or hors d'oeuvres. They're both, but... That seems like the wrong word to use. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more like this, let me know. If you have any suggestions for other videos I could do, then tell me about those in the comments as well. And I will see you next time. Bye!